Hi, I'm Chuck Gibson. This is Taking Stock with Art Jarvis, a bi-weekly discussion of what is happening in the economy, the world of finance, and personal investment with Art Jarvis. Taking Stock with Art Jarvis is a presentation of Loveland Beacon in partnership with Jarvis Global Investments, LLC. Now here is Taking Stock. Art Jarvis, welcome. Thanks for joining us again for episode number 21 of Taking Stock with Art Jarvis. As always, glad to be here. How are you doing today? Uh, good so far. Good, good. You know, as we record this, it's election day. I know you've been, to the, you've been to your polling place and cast your ballot. Did my, did my duty as a United States citizen. Yeah. Well, you know, and, and when we were talking offline, you, you said um, when you went in to cast your ballot at your polling place, mm -hmm. which is, of course, the safety center there in Loveland, right. um, it was it was you and Austin. Yeah, it was two, they both were Jarvises. <laughs> so, you know, and I, I did have yeah, two Jarvis That's ballots. Right. Hopefully that wasn't ballot number one and ballot number yeah. two for the day. Yeah. I didn't ask you when we were talking about it. Did you ask them, you know, I, what it had looked like so far? I, I, made a, I made a comment about, you know, big turnout, but they all kind of <laughs> laughed, which gave me the sense was it had not been a big turnout up wow. to that point. Yeah. But, uh, no, I... I usually don't ask for like what number am I, you know, because I'm, right. you know, it's I don't get there at seven o'clock in the morning. I get there more at nine o'clock in the morning. So right. it's not like the whippy dip where you know try to get the first cone. Yeah. So it's not it's not that kind of competition for me. Right. <laughs> well, Sue, my as I as I like to say, my lovely bride, mm -hmm. Susan, mm -hmm. and myself, we walked into the polling place at about ten fifteen. And it was it was light enough that we didn't have to wait or anything. We went through, but there were some people. I do ask when when I'm done casting my ballot, and so when I finished this morning, and and Sue was finishing up coloring in her circles, um, and I walked over and I said, "So how's it been?" And he said, "You know, kind of busy." Yeah. I said, "Yeah." I said, "Well, do you know the numbers? One ninety-seven. Okay. At at about ten fifteen a.m. Okay." So I, you know, did it open at six or did it open at seven a.m.? I think it's either six thirty or seven. Yeah. Yeah, that's, I was thinking six thirty, but yeah. so six thirty to about ten fifteen, close to two hundred ballots cast at our polling location, which is not the safety center. Yeah. Any but, idea uh, how that compares to other elections for you? I, well, I just go by what they tell me, and um, probably about middle middle of the road it wasn't really light yeah. and like the guy said those guys you know they work the table all the time so they know you know so when he said oh it's a little bit busy so i'm guessing it's a little bit heavier turnout in those first four hours than than is typical okay all right. for them but um it'll be interesting i you know to go by maybe later at the end you know toward the end of the day and say how did it look yeah. right if loveland beacon is going to cover it yeah well a big decision to make here today. Yeah, it, it, and it's interesting to me how quiet this election was. I mean, it, it, it's a primary, you know. A, and, it's a primary, and, right? Primary, and, and, you know, there are some decisions that need to be made on there, although many of the decisions were already made for us. You know, there weren't a whole lot. Well, yeah, vote for not more than one, and <laughs> right. there's one, you know, yeah. so. So, uh, you know, there was a couple I was... Uh, personally interested in and so I voted accordingly but uh, you know if you look from a standpoint it's not like a November election or something like that where you're just inundated with and I mean I've been getting plenty of texts on my phone and things like that you know about it but you know there really isn't that huge presence of signs and, and things like that so there wasn't it wasn't it wasn't nearly highly promoted as it has been in the past you make you make a good point and I noticed this morning you know, we went from, you know, we started our day in a different place before we went to the polls. And so we kind of went from one end of the town and then all the way back to the other, to the mm -hmm. polling place. I noticed this morning there were a lot more signs. Of course, we passed a couple of polling places, and they get inundated with signs, uh, uh, excuse me, on election day. But I noticed a lot more signs, you know, this morning than what I'd seen throughout. Yeah, now, right. that's... That as opposed to, you know, I've seen and heard 
enough right. on television and the radio. Um, personally, I cast my ballot for banning political advertising on television mm -hmm. because it's just mudslinging. It doesn't right. help me make my decision. It doesn't. It's just mudslinging, and it's ridiculous. The way, the way I look at it is the more mud someone's getting thrown at them, probably the more reason for me to take a look at them. Yeah. <laughs> for positive. Right. right. No, right. I'm with you. Well, you know, it, it, there was some thing, as you said, there was some things that were on there, uh, as quiet as it was. You know, I mean, the state, uh, you know, the, the Senate race um, for... You know, who, who's basically at the end of the day, you know, shared Brown on the Democrat side. Well, that's not tough, but there was three candidates on the Republican ballot. Yeah. Somebody's got to make a decision who's that going to be to oppose Sherrod Brown in November. So that was a, you know, that was a choice for mm -hmm. for people. And, um, you know, then Brad Wenstrup, you know, retired, <laughs> right. basically opened up his congressional seat. And so there was a whole lot of candidates on that District yeah. 2 congressional seat. Yeah, would you have like seven or eight different candidates? Eleven. Or Eleven. Oh, jeez. Yeah. I was talking to uh, somebody who's really into knowing a political activist here locally the other day, and I said, yeah, I said, oh, your District 1. Yeah. I said, well, you know, we got like 70 candidates. And she said, well, 11. I said, it seems like <laughs> 70. <laughs> like more. <laughs> but anyway. All of that's election day as we sit down here and record uh, episode number 21 of Taking Stock. So we're taking stock of election day here to start with, but we're going to get down to what's happening in this financial world since last we met two weeks ago yeah. and shared uh, uh, episode number 20 at that time. Yeah, yeah, and, it's, and yeah, I mean, this is, an, this is a financial economic show, but... Yeah, the election does tie in it to does. that. I mean, it it is in you know in my it's important, okay. And you know we we have gone through whatever the period of time is, couple of decades, three decades, whatever it is, where where we, in my opinion, uh, we have become more and more dysfunctional, and that you know dysfunctionality is not a positive thing for the markets. It causes a lot more volatility. It causes you not to accomplish things that you would want to a accomplish in hopes for the greater good of the American people and the economy and things like that. So, you know, to transition from <laughs> politics to, yeah, it, it's it's something that needs to be taken a look at. And, and in my opinion, it, it's hard to do. I'm not even sure sometimes we even have the right people to even vote on to accomplish some of these things. But uh, Well, I want, I want to ask you a question. Don't, yeah. lo don't lose your thought. Let's pick yeah. up where you left off. But dysfunctionality in, in government or in the election, when you're saying it has an impact on what's going on in the economy and this like last decade or whatever, there's been a lot of dysfunctionality. What dysfunctionality are you referring to? Yes. <laughs> government, yeah. well, government, government and election, election process. Any, right. And we've talked about this before. <laughs> Anything that causes uncertainty right. in our economy or in the markets is a bad thing. It causes volatility. It causes the markets to gyrate. It causes interest rates to go up and down unnecessarily. So if you have a government that's not functioning, uh, functioning smoothly, if you have an election, that is being questioned or or functioning. You know, how many elections have we had here in the past ten years? Where, you know, normally you know who won at the end of the night, and then we're still fighting over it a week later, right? You know, or, so, or more, or yeah. more. So, you know, that 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 causes strife in the market. So, yeah, to answer your question, it's it's all of the above. You know, any anything that causes uncertainty is a bad thing for the well, market. and that and that's the example I was looking for when you talk about dysfunctionality. It's it's these things where there's uncertainty comes from, you know, no decision who actually was elected or or the two parties, um, you know, can't get together. I mean, if we're talking, you know, federal government, which has the biggest impact on the world of, you know, finance and economics. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the uncertainty. That's the dysfunctionality where they can't come together with policy. Right. So, yeah, yeah. OK, again, we're. We're trying. It, maybe I'm a little naive, but I think you know it's. It, we're trying to come together for the greater good of the country. Correct. 
Yes. <laughs> no, and, that, and, I, and I get that when you said maybe I'm naive and I'm shaking my head. No, you're not. And then you said that, and I said, oh yeah, you know exactly. When that's the that's the point, right? Yeah. For the people, right? Not for the Republicans, and not for the Democrats, and not for the politicians, but for the people. You know, I do you do you want some? We're kind of still talking about, but the tie into the the world of economics and the tie tie into the world of our financial well being, not just as individuals, but as a as a country, has to do directly with are the people in leadership positions listening to the people. There's the dysfunctionality. Yes, yeah, that's that's a whole other show. <laughs> you know, it's, it, we need to I, do one in between uh, taking stock, that we'll just just chuck and art spewing out our thoughts on the yeah, subject. I, right? I have been quoted as saying multiple times that the people we want to run for these positions don't want the job. Oh, you and I both. Yeah, I mean, why no. would you want to? You know, why you might be. One of the nicest people in the world and squeaky clean. Why? But why would you drag yourself and your family through something like that? Because, you know, they're going to find something to throw mud at you about. Whether it's true or not, let's be clear. You know, we've got a little bit of an honesty problem going on in this country at the moment, too. And it's, you know, it's, but you need the right people in there. And don't get me wrong, you know, to kind of tie it in, I mean, the decisions that these uh, politicians make or our leaders make mm -hmm. has an impact on our economics, has an impact on our national debt, which has a huge impact on our country, especially now that interest rates are higher and things like that. So, you know, we we need people who are trying to make decisions for the greater good of the country, but not at the same time just giving away everything that's in the pantry, right? I mean, right. you know, you got the, there, there are, I, I completely acknowledge the fact that there's tough decisions to may, be made just inside our country domestically. Yeah. I mean, then there's a whole other international side. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's, 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 it's not an easy job, but, uh, you know, you have to go, I, I would think you have to go into it with the right mindset yeah. Um, of how you're going to approach it and things like that. And I'm, I'm not sure that's an easy thing to do for the average politician. It is not lost on me that I'm sitting across from Art Jarvis, former member of and at one point president of the Loveland City School District School Board. Mm -hmm. So you have some experience and knowledge and understanding of what is taken out of somebody who decides to serve keywords serve in that role and the very reason that you know there may be somebody that you there certainly I know for a fact there are people that I would talk to and say hey you know you have those leadership abilities why don't you and they're like there isn't a chance on this green <laughs> earth very politely on this green earth there's not a chance that I will run for elected office I don't want anything to do with that Mm -hmm. Not that my family or my whatever can't stand up to the scrutiny, but why should I? Yeah, I think. I mean, it, it's it, it. It was, and overall, it was a great experience. Good. Okay. Yeah. And I think in eight years that I was privileged to sit on the on that board of education, I think we accomplished a great many things. Okay. Right. Um, um, the standards were raised, our, 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 our process was raised, the quality of individuals that we were hiring was raised. Um, you know, we added AP classes. Uh, uh, you look at any, if you look at the sports program, the music program, the fine arts program, robotics, you know, whatever you want to look at, the, that bar over that 80-year period, in my opinion, was raised quite a bit. So, very proud of that. You know, they're... they're there's there's stuff that you know you prefer didn't happen, but in the end it, it just it just it it, yeah. it was what it was, and and uh, you know the, the, I think the problem is is that and I didn't you know wasn't smart enough to realize at the time was actually the trickling down of today's political environment down into the public schools. Right, you know, all this that had had been around for a while quickly worked its way down into and that's not a that's not a loveland thing that's a that's a national thing 
Right, it's all around us. Yeah, that yeah, wasn't wasn't unique to the Loveland School District or the, the city of Loveland. It's everywhere. Yeah, yeah this there. community's given a lot to me, and uh, it, it was my pleasure to serve on that. Right. You know, um, yeah, it's well, a great good. community. Still is a great community. So it's a good thing overall. It's a good thing. Hey, we we have both chosen to live here. Loveland mm-hmm. is a great community, but. You know, as we're wandering around here, um, not just wandering around the community, but ra- wandering around this conversation, getting back, I said, don't lose your, don't lose your train of thought. Mm-hmm. Um, getting back to, you know, what has been going on, and, and sure. you, you know, you said, uh, you know, the market's pulled back a little bit over the course of the last few days, if not the last fourteen days. Yeah, and only a little bit. I mean, you right. know, we were we were got just above fifty two hundred on the S and P, which is, you know, was looking for. Still calling for 5,400 sometime in 2024, uh, but we pulled back, and right now we're at 5,150. So we we haven't we we haven't pulled back one percent basically, but it is a pullback. And and the thing that kind of got that going was number one, I'll continue to say there's a such thing as too far too fast, mm-hmm. so you you need to cool off a little bit. But we got a couple of inflation numbers, and that monthly inflation number was slightly higher than what people were looking for so which is fine like you still look at you know we're still looking at you know 2.4 percent on the on the inflation that the fed looks at you look at consumer price index we're still at the 3.2 it's fine we're still in the low threes we're still in the twos i think the the thing is and we talked about this a couple podcasts ago was that Everyone all of a sudden, you know, we started talking about the possibility of rate decreases, and we quickly went from two rate decreases to we were talking about six or seven rate decreases. Just the pendulum completely swung to the other side, and the point was we're getting a little ahead of ourselves here, okay? You know, going from 10% inflation down to 3 or 4% inflation, that's a lot easier than going from 3% inflation down to 2% inflation. Right. Especially when you're looking, for example, at like uh, percentage increase in wages. You know, we're at five and a half percent year over year wage increases. Okay, you don't get the two percent inflation with five and a half percent wage increases. Okay, that's just it doesn't work. Right. Okay. So you know, if we get down to two and a half to maybe three percent wage increase, then the two percent inflation rate is a much more doable number. But at this moment in time, we're a long way from that. So that whole, this, I think what's happened here over the last couple of weeks is people have come a little bit to the realization that we're not going to have six or seven rate decreases this year. <laughs> and, you know, I'm still betting on the one or two rate decreases at the second half of the year. It wouldn't completely surprise me if one or two of those didn't even happen this year. So uh, I'm not going to bet the ranch on it, but, uh, you know, I'm definitely not in the camp. If something has to change drastically for us to go to have to have six rate decreases. You, you got to remember, if you're decreasing rates, you're pumping more money into the economy. You're, right. you're tapping or pushing a little bit harder on the accelerator. Right. In no way, shape, or form do we need to tap on the accelerator right now. We're cruising along yeah. just fine. All, all lowering rates is going to do is start to push that inflation number back up again. Yeah. Well, it's very interesting when you talk about that uh five five and a half percent wage increase Mm -hmm. when you know which you need to get it back to two and a half three percent wage increase but what happened obviously you know and correct me if i'm wrong but when that inflation rate jumped and the wage wages didn't keep up so now they're catching up and and then they'll slow back down if that makes you know if that makes sense to you yeah. Again, I've said to you before, like I do the majority of my work with three percent inflation. Right. That's that what I use. That's my that's my sweet spot. Okay. It's been working for two or three decades and I like it. You know, it's worked quite well. You know go from three percent inflation down to two percent inflation, now that in my work, in my mind, you know, that causes a few things, but it, it's just icing on the cake. Right. All right. So three we can have a re- we've proven historically. Three percent inflation, we can have a really good economy. We can have great unemployment. We can have all these nice things. We have great increases in uh, corporate earnings and things like that. You can, you know, it's it's three percent's a nice little spot in my opinion. 
Okay, and that's the way I do my work. If it's if it's a little higher, you adjust. If it's lower, you adjust. But yeah, if it wants to hang around three percent, I'm I'm okay with that. So, so what kind of adjustment do you make, uh, um, or do you even need to make suggestions for adjustments in somebody's portfolio or planning, when right now that wage increase rate is five and a half percent, but at the same time. Um, the inflation rate is is hanging out at the, that number you like that sweet spot that little three percent number. It's right in that neighborhood. What, where is it right now? Is it like it's three point two? It is three point two. Yeah. Okay, yeah, it's not. I didn't know if it was closer to four still, but it's it's three point two still. Yeah, okay, it's still good. It, and that's that's the point. Is like okay, we missed. You know, quotation right. marks. And since this is a radio show, is it? You know, um, we missed on that last inflation report, but it didn't, it's one number to start with that didn't affect the trend, and in spite of the fact that they didn't get the number they wanted, we're still at 3.2%. So, you know, in my world, we're back, the nice thing about these last few months or so, well really the last year, just no one was really paying attention to it, is we're, we're kind of back into what I call a highly predictable market okay now that doesn't mean we're not going to have volatility and and someone said something or someone did something that's going to cause the markets to react but if i'm looking at it from a purely economic standpoint if it wants to stay right here in this area i'm completely fine with that yeah yeah what are you and you touched on this but maybe bring some more clarity to it the, the just the slight pullback over the last couple of weeks mm -hmm. what were like the key factors you know pointing to that little bit of a pullback. I mean, I, you know, I, I guess to be more, you know, to bring clarity to what was the volatility, what was the uncertainty these last couple of weeks mm -hmm. that we just drew back a little bit. What, yeah, what would I, you say? I would still reiterate that really it's the inflation number. So, you know, we went from from looking for the Fed to raise rates and, uh, one more time to all of a sudden in October, not only did he say we're not going to rate, we're going to raise rates, we're going to start cutting rates here in the future. Well, that just sent everybody, you know, all that money had been sitting on the sidelines and things like that came, started pouring back into the market. That's why we had uh, a 20% fourth quarter last year in the market, right, plus 20%. Right. But now everyone's, again, with, I think, Everybody, the pendulum swung to the other side. Expectations for the future were that we were going to get rate decreases. If we got rate decreases, that should mean lower interest rates, and lower interest rates should mean a higher valuation on the stock market. I think people who, again, quotation, in the know, you know, they, <laughs> they, they kind of started to come to a realization, okay, this might not happen as fast as I was planning on it to happen, which was what we talked about when we were doing the predictions for 2024 and things like that. It's, it's okay, we're not going to go from 5,200 on the S&P to 6,000 all of a sudden. You know, it, it's going to be a slow, gradual thing. This whole inflation thing, if we're going to continue to focus on 2%, the Fed, Fed's going to continue to focus on 2% inflation, then if that's the focus, there's no reason to lower rates anytime soon. So, you know, that that potential of a higher market multiple because of the inflation number or because of interest rates, that's kind of been backed off of. And, you know, we... We talked about once before, it's, you know, back in 1992, I bought my first house at like 8.5% or something like that on the mortgage. Right. It took 30 years to go from 8.5% down to 3% on mortgage rates, okay? We're not going to go from 7% down to 3% in the... Tomorrow. In tomorrow. <laughs> yes. or, or tomorrow's tomorrow. I mean, it's going to be, it's going to take quite some time. And you don't want it to drop from seven down to three all of a sudden because that means something really bad's happening mm -hmm. in the economy or in the world. So, you know, I hear people, well, I'm going to wait for rates to drop before I buy a house. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, maybe you just go ahead and buy the house and, you know, you can always refinance, just buy a house you can afford, right? Right. So, um, or, well, or whatever, you know, you're buying or purchasing. I don't want to put uh, words in the listeners' mouths, but I think one of the takeaways um, – and maybe it's me and my naivety 
with regard to finance and economics and everything. Because like I said a million times, Susan should be sitting right, here. Right. I, I'm blessed to have a wife who knows what the heck is going on in the world, you know, in the economic world and finance, and I'd let her guide me in my decisions more or less. But one of the takeaways, uh, because of the, again, na- naivety of Chuck, says, oh, my gosh, you know, so the rates aren't going to drop? Mm-hmm. And then you start to freak out. And I don't want to put words in the listener's mouth, but maybe listeners are somewhat the same. And the takeaway is, hey, you know what? If those rate decreases don't occur, that's actually probably a pretty good thing in the current economy. Sure. Yeah. It's going to – It's a little, let's hold steady, yeah? Yeah, yeah 100%. I mean – Interest rates cause companies to make decisions. You know, it causes people to make decisions. Right. But more importantly, from an economics, well, <laughs> once again, the 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 consumer is seventy percent of gross domestic product, seventy percent. So, you know, you want the consumer to stay in it. So, you know, low or lower interest rates doesn't hurt anything. That you know, people are able to yeah. you know purchase and things. But even corporations, you know, they're making capital growth decisions based on interest rates and you know does you know what's the weighted average cost of capital and things like that well i'm making a decision about my company do we build this building do we do this or that and it depends on interest rates right so i mean if the interest rates are actually coming down a little bit that will cause some extra growth and things whether it's the consumer or it's or it's a company so um but Holding steady is also a good thing too, because you you can be more consistent. If I'm saying this right, well, you can be more consistent with your decision making process. Sure, right, yeah, so. that, those two fall in line for sure. Right. Steady, consistent, mm-hmm. yeah, that works. Now it doesn't help with the fact that we had 10 percent inflation back in 2022, and it's interesting. I went to a local burger joint last week and met Uh-oh. someone there. And the cheeseburger was nine dollars and ninety nine cents, and this wasn't like a gourmet burger place, okay? So, and I, mean, I even said something to the cashier. I said, "She said, wow." I said, "A cheeseburger is ten dollars now." She said, "Yep." I said, "How often do you hear that?" She goes, "All the time." And that was just for the burger. Yeah. That include that did not include the drink. That did not include. So did my point. Was there at least a side of fries? No. Well, there's a side if you want to pay for it. <laughs> it's, but, uh, you know, it's it's card. It, the point of may bring that up is is you know we had that inflation that and we'll use the cheeseburger analogy. The cheeseburger became ten bucks. Okay. Lower inflation rate doesn't mean we're going to start seeing that cheeseburger price go down. All that means is that cheeseburger may continue to increase, but at a much, at a much slower rate than it was in 2022. So that well, welcome going, to the new normal. We're going to check um, on March 19th, 2025, and see if there has been a 3% increase in the price of the cheeseburger or more. Yeah. But speaking of three, we got about three minutes left. And so take us forward as, you know, We've been taking stock, you know, of the elections, taking stock of what has happened the last couple of weeks and a pullback. So I'm going to ask you to push us forward, you know, just what what are you looking for in the next couple of weeks before we meet again for episode number 22? What are you thinking? I am looking for opportunities to take new money and put it to work. So if I am looking at a economy that I believe is doing well. I'm looking at you know economic numbers that seem to be doing well, and I don't see a major change coming down the pike. If the market pulls back, that's an opportunity to take new money and put it to work and buy some things, at least at a slight discount than what you could have a week ago or two weeks ago. So yeah, so when it pulled back to it was heading down to almost to 5100, to me I was like that's an opportunity to take X number of dollars and, and put it to work because at least I'm getting a little bit because I still have the expectation that the market's going to move forward. So why not buy a little cheaper and have a little bit bigger profit? Perfect. There you go. All right. (laughs) Well, Art, it has once again been a great pleasure. Thanks for joining us and sharing your insights and taking stock. Mm -hmm. Episode number 21 is in the can, my friend. Yeah, always a pleasure. And, again, I'll reiterate, this is is good for me, too. But uh, hopefully... uh, Hopefully it's beneficial to the people who are listening. And I will reiterate one other thing kind of put on social media is if you have a question, ask it. I mean, you know, there's nothing stopping us from discussing something specific on this show. 
that my people might be interested in. Where you find this on LovelandBeacon.com and then the social media sites, including the Loveland Beacon Facebook page, share a comment, share a question, as Art just said. And what I'll share with you now as we depart, you're getting ready to uh, make a little road trip, I guess, visit some clients and, yeah. and maybe have some leisure along the way. But uh, safe travels, my friend, and Thank see you. you in two weeks. Appreciate it. Thanks for all you do. You bet. Thanks for joining us for this edition of Taking Stock with Art Jarvis. Join us again in two weeks for our next edition, Taking Stock with Art Jarvis, is a presentation of Loveland Beacon in partnership with Jarvis Global Investments, LLC. Jarvis Global Investments, LLC, is a registered investment advisory firm. The advisor is not attempting to furnish personalized investment advice or services during this production. Individuals should fully investigate the appropriateness of any investment before investing. Past performance is no guarantee of future results. Investments may lose value.